Have you ever brewed a really hoppy beer style that uses a ton of hops like a IPA, double IPA, or any IPA? And we're disappointed that you got less beer in your fermenter than you originally thought you would? That's because all the hops you threw in there absorbed a lot of the water that you would have otherwise had in that fermenter. If you'd like to learn how to account for that going forward, stick around and I'll show you. Hello everyone and welcome back. So this video is about hop absorption rates. Now I did a recent one about grain absorption rates, right? Uh, and this is along that same vein. I wanted to figure out how much wort or water my hops were absorbing in my kettle or actually throughout my whole system really from dry hops as well. But for starters, the kettle to figure out how much more water I need to use to throw into the boil to get the final wort or beer volume I want at the end of the boil. And one aspect of that was the hops absorption rate. Now for small, lighter, hoppier, uh, more like basic beers, traditional beer styles where you add only an ounce or two of hops for some bittering and flavor, those you don't really much pay much attention to because uh, the errors of measurements of at the home brewing scale are so sloppy that you aren't probably even going to notice that difference. But in the recent years, uh, some more trendy uh, styles like the NEIPA style, which is a whole bunch of hops in this uh, batch or, or even really strong IPAs, because of these more modern styles uh, and the amount of hops used in them, the influence they have on how much uh, uh, water uh, is absorbed by them, therefore reducing your final batch size uh, that you get from your brew day has been kind of frustrating, honestly. So what you gotta do is fudge factor it or what I've had to do is fudge factor it. Several versions ago, my brewing spreadsheet that's fr uh, freely available to use out there. Several versions ago, I actually used and added a hops absorption rate column to try to accommodate for this. So when I design my recipes, the starting water volume I need is bumped up a little bit based upon the, the, uh, the amount of hops I have in that recipe. And that's worked okay, it's helped a little bit, but I had no, no data points of an actual value to enter for that hop absorption rate until now. So what I used before was as a default in that spreadsheet was about 0.1 ounce per hops. And I think I saw that on a forum once upon a time somewhere to, to use that as an assumption. It seemed like it was still a little light, but it did uh, get me closer to what I wanted, but I knew it wasn't quite right yet. So I decided to do something about it, right? So what I did is similar to what I did with my previous grain absorption rate video, where I took a fixed volume of water measured at a calibrated temperature. In my case, it was 68 degrees and a calibrated uh, volume, which was for me a milk jug that was calibrated from a, a laboratory grade uh, graduated cylinder. So, uh, so I use that as my baseline. And in order to do this right, as you probably already know, that uh, water volumes uh, can change with temperature, which will throw off your results. So I wanted to make sure when I measured the volumes and when I finished the volumes, they were at the same baseline temperature of, and for me that was 68 degrees. So what I did was measure out a gallon and a half of water that was calibrated almost exactly, and at 68 degrees. Heated it up to a typical mash temperature of around 150 degrees. Added a ounce of hops to it, and let it sit for an hour, giving it time to steep and soak in all that liquid greatness. You're probably wondering, well, why didn't I just boil it to be representative of a boil? Well, truth be told, you may have heard me comment before uh, the, uh, about evaporation rate in the mash getting kind of interfering with the actual measured value for the hops absorption rate. I wanted to minimize that. If I were to boil it, I would lose a lot to boil off evaporation. Didn't want to have to account for that this time around. And that's what I did. And the results were surprising. My default spreadsheet value was about 0.1 quarts per ounce of hops. It ended up being about 0.35 quarts per ounce, over three times what I was assuming it was. And really that might be a bit high because with any kind of experiment, there's experimental error when it comes to measuring tools, of course, but also uh, some losses when you're transferring water from vessel to vessel, you lose a little bit of water that's clinging to the sidewalls and some other things like that, right? So uh, that's more of a max value. So I think going forward, at least I have a better idea of the ballpark value. I'm probably gonna drop that personally to about 0.3 quarts per ounce on my spreadsheet and all my recipe design going forward. And I'll rest better knowing that I have better predicted the water usage I need for my brew days to get the outputs and numbers that I expect at the end of brew day. Yay, right? So I hope you found that information useful. I certainly did. It was eye-opening. I didn't know how much uh, water hops could really absorb and they, and they absorbed more than I thought. 
And I'm gonna use this value, like I said, in future batches. I wanna see how it goes in future videos. You can follow me along, keep an eye on what I'm doing. If you're not a subscriber, I suggest you subscribe. If you wanna see how this turns out going forward on brew days and how better, how much better my numbers converge uh, than they have in the past. So other than that, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time.